beautiful setting this is, no? <laughs> Take a minute. Marvel at the splendor of the pine and cedar trees. Breathe deep. Smell that delicious aroma. The sweetness is intoxicating. All this is God's creation and his gift to mankind. It's a treasure that should and must be preserved. But just like the commercial world is encroaching upon our sacred grounds, we must hold on to places like this so that we never forget the wonders of nature. My name is Seneca Ray Stoddard, and I was born in Wilton on May 13th, 1843. My parents, Charles and Julia, they owned a small farm there. And I guess it's there where I discovered the majesty of the land. Uh, many people think that I was named after the, after the great Seneca Indian tribe of central and western New York, but they're wrong. <laughs> Truth be told, I was named after the uh, Roman philosopher Seneca, who was a confidant to Emperor Nero and who spoke out in his oratory against tyranny and material abuse. It was a very popular name in the early 1800s, as you can imagine, after what we endured to win our independence. My mother passed when I was seven, which made me grow up all too quickly. At the early age of 16, I moved from home and I got a job in Troy, working at the Eaton and Gilbert Car Works, where I painted landscapes of my youth, uh, battle scenes of the Civil War on railroad cars. <laughs> in uh, 1862, I, uh, I moved to Glens Falls, where I continued painting signs, landscapes, portraits. Mind you, I had no formal training. Uh, so to hone in my own skills, I studied under George Conkey, who introduced me to two new art forms, photography and stereography. It wasn't long before I mastered these techniques and I began my career using wet plate technology, taking pictures. And, uh, many of my colleagues, they preferred portraits, but taking pictures of still people in a controlled environment presented no challenge to me. So I wanted to capture landscapes, uh, civic monuments, and preserve their heritage for future generations. So I did. Thousands, I took thousands of pictures of my beloved home state, especially at the Adirondacks, Saratoga, Albany, the Hudson, New York City. And then later when I had the means and I could travel, I, I captured the beautiful American Southwest, Alaska, uh, Cuba, South Africa, North Africa, Europe. And many of these photos can be seen at the Blue Mountain Lakes Museums, the Chapman, I was a pioneer in taking photos at night by using a magnesium flash. Just, uh, I, uh, two of my most famous photos, one being uh, the, of the Statue of Liberty and the other being of the, the arch in Washington Square, the, which is the beginning of Fifth Avenue. While I was taking that photo, there was a misfire and the magnesium flash exploded all over me, ultimately sending me to the hospital. But not until I made sure the picture was perfect. As they say, the show must go on. <laughs> uh, since my life was beginning to take root, I married Helen Potter in 1872. She was my, my companion, my confidant for, for 42 years until she passed. And uh, Helen bore me two sons, Leroy and Charles. Leroy was a doctor specializing in plastic surgery, and Charles was a lawyer. Unfortunately, I have no grandchildren, and my lineage ends with my two sons. We buried Helen in uh, the Glens Falls Cemetery about a mile down the road, and uh, after two years of mourning, I married Emily Doty, who lies in rest next to me here in Pineview. Besides my photography, I also surveyed and mapped large portions of the Adirondacks, especially the Lake George and the Lake Champlain Basin. I'm proud to say that many of these maps are still being used today. In uh, 1872, I published Adirondacks Illustrated. It was a guidebook for those interested in exploring the, the beauty of the region. It, it included my maps, my paintings, my photographs, and it was continually updated until uh, 1910. And then riding the popularity of this publication, I published Lake George Illustrated and Lake Champlain Illustrated. 
it highlighted these gorgeous lakes and the surrounding lands. I believed that the best way to preserve these natural treasures was to, was to showcase their beauty and convince people that they need to be protected. In uh, 1876, I spoke in front of the New York State Assembly. I showed them slides of the Adirondacks and showed them the beauty of this region and how it was being destroyed by commercialization. A few short months later, the legislature was passed and Governor Roswell Flower signed a law creating the Adirondacks Park. I consider this to be my greatest accomplishment. I saw firsthand the beauty of this land and needed to preserve it. To this end, I feel like my life has been worth living successful, and I can rest in peace knowing that future generations can enjoy the land that I love. Thank you.